This is Fred Willis, who's uh, president and CEO of uh, HPN Neurologic. He just happens to be an ex-NFL football player also. And we're going to talk about first Fred's background, and then about uh, NFL football and traumatic brain injury, TBI in general. So Fred, maybe you could just tell us a little bit yeah. about your background. Thank you. I played uh, nine years in the National Football League, and as you mentioned, I'm president and CEO of HBN Neurologic. Um, Who did you play? What position uh, did you play? Who I was a uh, <clears throat> I was a running back, and uh, I played with the Cincinnati Bengals, Houston Oilers, and uh, Denver Broncos. Did you get? Uh, did your head get bounced around very much? Or yes, I, you know I uh, typically uh, there's so much said in the, in the media today about. Uh, concussions in football and certainly I suffered uh, a number of concussions while I played. We were actually knocked out? Yes. yes. Yep. Okay. Okay. And you feel that uh, it's changed aspects of how your brain works and do you see it in your life, reflected in your life? Yeah, I, I uh, uh, unfortunately I, I had a, a pretty serious illness for about four years where one of the conditions of the illness was that I um, I experienced uh, severe symptoms of encephalopathy. Right. And uh, as you know, uh, encephalopathy or chronic traumatic encephalopathy is what's going on uh, with the retired NFL players now. And uh, that has been brought on by a series of concussions that uh, the players suffered over the history of their football careers, probably from the time they were a Pee Wee football player all the way through till their you know, uh, experience playing in the National Football League. Do you still, are you, uh, have close relations, still in touch with uh, some of your former comrades in arms who are really suffering from this? Yes, uh, HPN Neurologic is really uh, going to go out on the forefront of the TBI issue. Um, uh, part of our company is uh, made up of ex-NFL football players and uh, Jack Youngblood, who played for Los Angeles Rams and is in the NFL Hall of Fame, is part of my company. And we also have uh, an ex-NFL player, Kenny Green, who had a long career with the uh, St. Louis Cardinals and San Diego Chargers. So uh, all three of us have sort of uh, uh, accepted uh, the responsibility, if you will, to uh, seek out uh, retired NFL players who are suffering from traumatic brain injury and uh, use our uh, you know, uh, device, which is HBN, High Performance Neurofeedback, uh, which treats the symptoms of traumatic brain injury. Uh, can you say something about the study you're planning to do? Well, right now, uh, we're getting ready to start up in the next 30 days um, two major studies. Uh, the first one we're g is going to be undertaken in uh, Los Angeles. And uh, we are working through uh, the National Football League Players Association retired players uh, chapter in Los Angeles. Uh, and I'm also working with uh, uh, around 30 uh, NFL PA retired uh, chapters uh, throughout the country. But we're starting this project, uh, this, the clinical research study uh, in Los Angeles, of which uh, uh, you are going to be overseeing that study, along with uh, Julie Anton, uh, who was uh, our research scientist. So uh, what we're trying to do there is uh, through a uh, a very serious uh, process, uh, confidential process, uh, reach out to uh, these retired players who are members of the uh, Los Angeles chapter and uh, seek out the ones that are uh, suffering uh, uh, from traumatic brain injury. And um, we're going to get those guys uh, into treatment and with our uh, HBM device. So besides the, uh, the upcoming study with the ex-NFL football players, uh, is there any, uh, other, are there any other studies in the pipeline? Yes, there are. Uh, within the next 30 to 60 days, HBM Neurologic is going to 
uh, undertake a clinical series analysis study with the Navy SEALs. Um, as you know, uh, it's, uh, which is uh, so prevalent now in the media, uh, probably the, the two uh, most talked about issues with regard to traumatic brain injury are the military and the NFL. Right. So we are undertaking research in, in the, both of those areas and delving into uh, the issues of traumatic brain injury with retired players and uh, we're starting up a study with the Navy SEALs. Uh, we feel that the, the SEAL study is going to be quite, quite interesting because uh, it's going to be a mixed group of sea, Navy SEALs who are at the point of retirement as part of our uh, 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 our population, and then uh, the other part of the population will be retired Navy SEALs. So uh, these guys uh, obviously are, you know, the, uh, the, the have suffered tremendous blast damage throughout their uh, service, and uh, they've got uh, extensive traumatic brain injury. So uh, we're very excited about. Uh, seeing how uh, HBN can uh, effectively help these guys improve the quality of their life and, uh, and certainly uh, they deserve it because of uh, who they are and what they stand for and how they've served this country. So we're very excited about that. And then uh, I want to mention a third study that will begin very soon. Right. And this is uh, affiliated with UCSD, University of California at San Diego where we'll be treating um, retired military, specifically Marines, yes. <clears throat> who have suffered from TBI. Yes. And uh, there'll be very, very sophisticated uh, imagery mechanisms um, using magnetic encephalograms, MRI. will be a, a very, very high-tech uh, and I think a very important study. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing the results of that. We're very excited about that study in particular because if, uh, if the study goes well and we get the results we think we're going to get with HPN, uh, then uh, there's poss very good possibility that that, uh, that study could be the forefront of a double-blind study that could possibly be undertaken uh, with regard to uh, traumatic brain injury. And I think, it, uh, I, I, as far as I know, I think it would be the first double-blind study regarding uh, traumatic brain injury ever, to, ever undertaken. So that would be quite significant. Um, Stephen and David, um, you know, uh, we're so excited about these studies with uh, the retired NFL players and, and uh, the issue of TBI, but I think it's important to note or, or maybe mention a little bit about what uh, these uh, players, retired players who have gotten multiple concussions over their careers um, are, are now uh, the symptoms that they're suffering from. Uh, it is it is amazing. Uh, uh, people, I don't think, realize what these NFL players have uh, are going through right now. And uh, I would cite, um, you know, everyone is aware of uh, the number of suicides that have occurred in the last few years with uh, NFL players like Juni Seau, uh, Dave Dorison. Uh, and such. Uh, there's an, uh, actually, I think there's been 16 suicides in the National Football League in the last two years. Um, and and this, is, uh, this is something that is an epidemic, and uh, really the f this is the focus of HBN Neurologic. We want to get in and see if we can stem uh, the, those uh, uh, conditions that they're suffering now, stop them, put them off, uh, relieve it in any way we can and you guys uh, as you know you guys are the expert on how how this neurofeedback works but uh, we feel that we can really um, you know make a make a huge change in, in uh, how these guys are behaving right now uh, and how their lives are being affected and the unfortunate thing about traumatic brain injury is that you know, it, it's not that the that our, our brothers in the NFL who have this horrible disease are suffering in silence, but, uh, you know, we know for a fact that it's affecting their families, it affects their children. Uh, some of these guys are turning to alcoholism, drug addiction, heavy drug use, 
to offset these horrible conditions. So, um, you know, just to sort of en enlighten people on really what these symptoms are and what it's like to have uh, mid-stage or uh, TBI, because really in the case of the Junior Seals and the other 16 players in the National Football League to commit a suicide, they were, they were really end-stage CTE. They were at the end, and CTE, as you know, or TBI, is a progressive disease. There's no cure for it, and uh, at some point, it's over. And I think that these guys, uh, with the horrible condition that they were experiencing at the time, really opted for suicide rather than continue to live the way they did. Yeah. So this is, this, is, this is what HBN Neurologic is all about. This is what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to attack this issue, especially with the NFL, especially with our, uh, you know, our distinguished war veterans who deserve, deserve better than what they're getting right now. Absolutely, Fred. I think, I think they do. And um, I, I'm hoping that my uh, colleague Mary Lee will join us in a little bit because she is really one of the world's experts in, uh, in traumatic brain injury. And her about-to-come-out book, Conquering Concussion, has the historical aspect, the medical aspect, the social behavioral aspect and the cure for how neurofeedback has worked really to ameliorate something that modern medicine and modern neurology has no answer for. When the players or, or people who have been in auto accidents or even the military guys come in to see their doctors, they shake their heads and say, get plenty of rest. Okay. And they don't know what else to do. They don't have the uh, understanding of the brain dynamics that, that is necessary. A, um, a great mentor of mine was a neuropsychologist named Roland Parker. And I think it was at the, either the American Association of Applied Psychophysiology and Biofeedback or the ISNR, International Society for Neurofeedback and Research, that he gave this brilliant, brilliant paper in which he said, you're talking about head injury, but look at the whole body. Look at the digestive system, the immune system. The, uh, the ability to kind of to sleep comfortably at night. Or one of the first uh, ex-football players that I, I uh, worked with, um, he could do nothing but sleep. He slept 16 hours a day and his family was saying, my God, you've got to wake this man up. So it could, the, the form which the injury takes is legion. And it depends on the genetic history of the person, their metabolic and constitutional makeup, the number of injuries they've had, if they've had more than one injury, the complexities go up exponentially. And this is really, really being studied now uh, by people who understand microbiology. No, what's going on right now is that uh, we all know there's no cure for traumatic brain injury, but so we're, we're seeing now in the last couple of years since the, Na the National Football League and the Armed Forces have sort of come out of denial about the TBI issue, um, that um, Guys are, are uh, at some point now being diagnosed uh, possibly with CTE. Well, the, the problem is, and this is why HBN is so dynamic, is that even our retired football players that we're speaking with right now that we're getting ready to start to treat, they, they, they know they have TBI. And in some cases, like Tony Dorsett uh, last week came out and, and said that uh, he had... Uh, somehow been examined and they told him that he had uh, traumatic brain injury CTE. But even so, what are we going to do about it? You know, and the people that are living with this disease, really the only options they have, or one of the great options they have, is the treatment of HPN with this. You know, I mean, it's one thing to, to be determined that you have CTE, but what do you do about it? Yeah. You know, how can, uh, you know, what do you do about it? You know, once you, you, they, most of these guys knew already that they had it. So finally somebody figures it out and says, well, you definitely have it. Well, what happens now? And this yeah. is where we are with, with our, our research and our treatment procedures where we're, we're going to be out there and, and we feel that, that we're an option uh, to attack that. I think that there are three uh, levels, Fred, of how people are likely to recover from traumatic brain injury. Number one is a supportive family. 
And we all know that it's the wives of these injured players that have brought the lawsuit to the attention of yep. the NFL and pushed it through. So number one is a supportive family. Number two is an adequate environment which includes nutrition, adequate nutrition, because the brain can't rebuild itself unless we have those complex molecules available. They're the raw materials of rebuilding. And the third thing is, is neurofeedback. And neurofeedback followed then by physical therapy, occupational therapy, and that kind of thing. Neurotherapy is important because the brain has its own neuroprotective mechanisms, and it goes into a kind of a shutdown, like a seizure, to protect itself. And so there are areas of the brain that are walled off to stop itself from seizing. And when that happens, you have what are called functional shutdowns in the brain, and they are vast. People can't think their way out of a paper bag. They, uh, their memories are shot. Their ability to solve problems are shot. Particularly if they've been hit in the front of the head, their executive functions are really pretty much missing. And um, neurofeedback can do an awful lot to kind of coax the brain into restoring those, uh, those areas. They're not always long axonal shearing. There are damage to the neurotransmitter environment, intracellular damage, especially with military blast injuries now. We, we know that what happens inside the cell is, is as important as what happens between the cells, including the neurons. So neurofeedback is wonderful, and I think HPN is, is going a long way towards being able to really help these people. Are you able to, what do you, uh, what percentage do you find um, benefiting from neurofeedback and HPN? that treatment? Well, pretty high percentage. Um, I mean, it, it depends on how far gone uh, people are and uh, do they have symptoms of early uh, onset Alzheimer's or that kind of thing or beta amyloid plaques in the brain. There are certain kinds of irreversible things that you can't change, but if you catch people early enough in the process, the brain is neurologically plastic and it will rebuild itself.